The estuarine crocodiles can also live in freshwater, going up to 300 kilometers in land. They have an unlimited appetite and even swallow big stones which stay in their guts so that their bodies stay lower in the water. These real man-eaters are responsible for countless attacks on humans in their areas. However, the thrill and the chance to see the big crocs brings thousands of dollars to Kakadu. Perhaps this looks like a boat full of meat for some of them, but they will get more out of the tourists if they don't eat them. For conservation purposes, visitors to Kakadu are channeled to just a few places which the park keepers control perfectly. And if they want to see crocodiles, they have the chance to get a very close look. If this man is not careful, he may be in for instant early retirement. These crocodiles are still wild and can move incredibly fast. As you can see, they're very fast and uh, they've got a wicked set of jaws. Although the old croc loses some of its natural dignity in these surroundings, this is preferable to trying to control myriads of individual tourists in these marshes, with the risk that when the agency guide makes a recount of those who have returned to the buses, his numbers don't add up. The fascinating spectacle encourages the sale of a whole host of articles with pictures of the estuarine crocodiles. The profits obtained are used in the care and management of the park, so this great reptile becomes a sort of benefactor for all the flora and fauna of Kakadu. Their vast herds amaze people who can't help imagining meeting one face to face. People clearly adore them. When the first colonists gave up any attempts to settle in the area because of the harshness of its climate, the crocodiles became important and notorious. Only two types of white men were tough enough to stay here missionaries and crocodile hunters. Two professions which were equally difficult. Fortunately, the authorities put a stop to crocodile hunting before it wiped them out. Crocodiles do not chew their food, they swallow their prey whole, leaving the hard work to their gastric acids, which can take months to metabolize a large body.
This fact, combined with the fossils of 17-meter-long estuarine crocodiles, gives us an idea of what these animals are capable of polishing off. When the water layer has gone down enough, the characteristic ponds and lagoons known as billabongs are formed. The billabongs attract birds with aquatic connections from all over Australia. Pelicans, waders and sandpipers strive, each in their own way, to capture fish and the invertebrates swimming below. This is a splendid moment for birds, as there is not enough water for crocodiles to be a problem, and only animals that can fly may reach this area without sinking. The bad times return soon afterwards with the drought and the birds will have to leave. <laughs> then the dry heart of Kakadu will be populated by furry Australians with bags. Someone called this land Never Never Land because those who have seen it never want to leave. This may or may not be true, but the truth is that Kakadu oozes the essence of ancient Australia, the creative spirit of the Aboriginal goddess Waramurungundi.